Hello everyone, welcome to Drop Frames Game of the Year 2017 show. It's been a year. We did last year's show in my house, right? That was, I'm not misremembering. Yep. yep. Didn't they re announce IRL a year ago as well at that show? Yep. God damn it. It's been a year <laughs> since IRL has been around. It has, it has, yeah. Uh, yeah. So we're going to be live for the next four hours talking about uh, <laughs> our best games of uh, our Let's let's just classify this a little bit better because game of the year is is a loose term. It's not. It's a fluid term. Uh, these are our top games that came out in 2017 that aren't early access, that aren't a update to a game, and aren't an expansion. Yeah, is that it? Yep. It's no it. DLC. No early access. Yeah. The um, top ten base game releases of 2017. Yes. So yeah. that means so that eliminates Go ahead. Uh, uh, the XCOM two expansion. Path of Exile. Um, Path of Exile's out. Darkest Dungeon. Darkest Dungeon. Um, um, yeah. Anything like that. <clears throat> is there? I'm trying to think if there would be anything. Horizon DLC, but Horizon came out this year as well, so that, that's still in there. Uh, is there anything else that would be eliminated? PUBG came out today. Or, but it missed the cutoff. Did it? Yes. Okay. I guess. It, I. I mean, <laughs> for me, it missed the cutoff. <laughs> it, it might be a little telling that I don't care either way, but uh, yeah. You know, I. I'd, I'd have to go back through my list and see, like, because that's another thing we. I think we. It deserves a little mention. Is that these are not games for me personally. They're not games that I think deserve the top ten. They are games that I think that are, excuse me, that are in my personal top 10. Like, yes. there are games that I, it's, it's like looking at a, a piece of art and going, that's a great piece of art, but it doesn't speak to me personally. Right. You know? Yeah. There's a lot of, I mean, because I can look, I can look at a drawing and go, that's a great drawing. I don't like it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's why, that's my top 10 is of games that I loved throughout the year. Yep. Well, it's, a, it, okay, it's interesting Sorry. that you say that. I actually have a little off. bit. I have actually something to say as well in, in regard to that. This year's top 10 was one of the hardest top 10s I've ever done. And I actually had, for the first time ever, I had to make an honorable mentions at the end of my top 10 list. <laughs> yeah. And I had to put games in there because I felt so bad for not putting them in my top 10. Yeah. Um, there are games that I played this year that I said verbatim, no question this will be in my top 10 that aren't in my top 10. Yeah, there's. Um, it, it was crazy. Like when I sat down and looked at all the games that came out this year, it I, it blew me away. So what I had to do, kind of like Zeke did his top ten this way, right? I'm like mirrored or something. Yeah, um, you're mirrored. So just like Zeke, <laughs> just like Zeke is talking about his top ten is like games that he really enjoyed. My top ten is a little bit different this year because I had to not do games that I just had fun playing, and I had to pick my top ten in forms of like what games do I felt pushed their genre forward, or what games do I felt brought something new to gaming. Or, or things like that. I kind of had to approach it differently because there were just too many games I enjoyed this year, which is a great thing, True. but made the top 10 hard. I think the other thing too, at least for my personal list, uh, I had to have played the games. So that means uh, Divinity, it's out. I didn't play Divinity. Near didn't play Nier. Um, I'm trying to think if there was anything else on the list that would have been there that I didn't check out. Or, I think that those are probably I'm in the big same ones. boat with Xenoblades. I'm in the same boat with Persona 5. Yeah. Like, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. There was a lot of oh. games this year for sure. And actually, yeah, I, I, would, I, would, I would find that suspect if you put something on there and it's like, this is my top 10. You never played it. I know, but it, it should be there, right? Like, no, you have to have played it. Well, but, it's it's funny yeah. because I actually had this, this dream slash nightmare that uh -oh. I'm going to play. I'm going to check out Persona 5 in January and it's going to be amazing and it's going to blow me away. And then I'm going to sit there and be like, why didn't I play this last year? Because <laughs> I mean, the same thing happened with Xenoblades. I basically sweat, said, Xenoblades, this looks super anime. I'm not going to try it. Yeah. And then you guys were like, actually, it's pretty good. And then we had that show where like, actually, the mechanics are pretty good too. And then I tried it and I'm like, you know what? This is actually pretty good. Like I'm, I'm now what 12 plus hours into Xenoblade and I'm really enjoying it. So one of the things that I, I told to my community, and I'm sure you guys are probably thinking the same thing at this point, next year and moving forward, even if I don't think I'm going to like a game, I'm still going to try it. Not only for our Game of the Year show next year, but also because I think it's really important, especially when you have hundreds of people recommending you play a game every day, that you not only can say, I've tried it, but you can say why I don't like it. Because right. I wasn't able to do that. 
So lessons learned this year with those two. And uh, yeah, next year I think we'll we'll make sure we at least try everything. Yeah, our little co's our little co's growing up. He's trying new vegetables. It's great. I am. I, By am. Way, I Zeke, may not like them, but I'll still try them. Yeah, Zeke, if you want to do the arm reach thing, you, you can do that now. You've been your cage has been yeah. Little, he's all grown up. He's all grown up. Good job. Good job. Come. <laughs> um, I think before we get started, we have been playing some games, so we'll talk maybe I don't know five ten minutes about that. Uh. Ko, I know you've been alongside Path of Exile. You've been playing Xenoblade. You talked a little bit about that. The beginning of the show, I have not watched you play it, so I'm just super curious. Are you enjoying it? Do you like it? What do you not like All about right. it? Like, where are you at with Xenoblade right now? So where am I at with Xenoblade? So I started up Xenoblade, and uh, I have to admit, the first sequence got me a lot more interested than I thought. Uh, the world is really cool. The whole Titan thing is really cool. Um, I'm in the, the smaller boat where, hey, I don't mind the accents. I actually kind I of either. like the different accents that the, the English voiceovers have. So I, I don't mind it at all. Um, I started salvaging, fell in love with that system. Uh, I fell in love with the development system. I'm really enjoying the combat and the pacing of combat and how many different things you can do in combat. I got my first rare blade the last time I played. That was huge. Oh, who'd you get? Changed. I got uh, Korra. She's like the lightning chick that has her ass hanging out. It's great. I don't think I um, actually have her. Yeah, huh. she, she's, uh, she's actually pretty good um and yeah but the the, sh the short the tldr of it all is i'm enjoying it a lot more than i thought i was going to nice. um it's to the point where the last time i played it i just spent three hours running around doing side quests like yeah. it was just it was just fun so yeah i'm enjoying it i'm liking where the story is going i'm looking forward to playing it more i'm a little bit worried about how long it is because uh even if i really like a game if you know by that 20th 21st 22nd stream of it you know you start to drag a little bit so uh, we'll have to see how that goes but yeah. yeah, I'm I'm liking it, man. I'm liking it a lot more than I thought I was. And uh, it's because I'm liking this so much that I kind of told my community, like, all right, we'll try Persona in January. Like, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> I said I didn't like it, and I like this one. I said I didn't like Persona. We're going to try it. Yeah, I keep, uh, I feel bad because people keep coming into the stream, my stream, and saying, like, uh, did you finish Xenoblade? And I'm in there in POE, and I'm just like, ah, oh, god damn it, I got to sell Xenoblade. Yeah. Xeno yeah. Xeno yeah, we're going to finish Xenoblade. Anyways, uh, let's go back. One day. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm i in chapter seven at the very beginning. I think there's 10. So I probably still have like 20 hours left of the game or something like that. I just got to three, I think. Okay. If you go to the end of my most recent uh, uh, run, I should have Cora out if you were wanting oh, to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll what she looked look. like. Um, one other thing we should note also before we jump into the game of your stuff uh we're doing a bunch of new like tech i guess you could say or overlay crap for the uh the game of the year show so some of them might just fuck up xsplit might just crash because we have about nine additional scenes in xsplit than we usually do and it might the just, cost of cutting edge jp it might just fuck everything up so we'll see That's um cool. let me go to past broadcast i want to see this uh oh that that was the vod right there i just need to skip forward um uh, let's see if i can find her uh, is she a tank healer? What what uh, what specs? Uh, she is a DPS primitive fist electric based. Okay. And she does really fast attacks, and she's got some cool uh, like status stuff and all that all that goodness. Um, trying to see. Is that her? There she oh is. yeah, I've never seen her before. Yeah, dead booty. Yeah, the character design in Xenoblade is cool, but man, are there just have you seen or heard of Newt? Not yet, no. She that a, isn't uh, that isn't Tub Girl, is it? No, no. Tub Girl is fucking phenomenal. She is an amazing, <laughs> uh, amazing blade in that game, without a doubt. Oh, I'm sorry. Apparently, she's a healer. People are saying she's a healer. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, I've never. Like, I like her stance is kind of ridiculous as well. Yeah, Tub Girl cost uh, 500k. 500. Which I don't, unless you want me to. There is a very easy way to make money in that game. So much so that I have about four million right now and it took maybe an hour. Go, go ahead and tell me, because I think I know. Okay. Uh chapter three, are you in the third world yet? Where are you at? Uh, yeah. Okay. I just just finished the ship in this area, and I think we're like in the I'm doing side up cleaning quests in this area and then I'm moving on. Okay. Once you get um salvaging and once you get a development up to gold. Um, you need like a hundred K to start out with, but basically you just drop like 
10 or 15 gold sal or gold uh, cylinders, whatever, go salvage with them and then go back to the town's development stuff, sell all that and keep doing that over and over and just keep buying more and more every time you go back. And once you hit, I think it's more ordain is the, the Titan, um, which is like chapter four, chapter three. Um, you can do that. And each run you'll make like 1.3 or 1.4 million gold in like 30 minutes. Beautiful. I, if you, I don't know if you're watching, I'm already doing that with silvers. Yeah. Like my yeah. plan is, my plan is to just keep doing that. Like as, as it, pretty much as much as I can. It makes it yeah. really silly because then you can just walk into cities and literally buy everything and then sell everything and it's development like level four or five because you the the development Beautiful. goes up by selling stuff so you can kind of skip a lot of that grind oh is that okay i thought it went up by buying stuff it goes both so i i know that like I, my, my dev for this city is only three so there's some people that i can buy all their items and i don't see the deed thing yeah so what i've been doing is waiting until i see the deed and then when i buy the deed then i sell everything that i bought but I've only seen that on like one or two stores so far. I don't know how to get the dev like all the way up first. Yeah. I'm just doing quests yeah. and stuff in the area, but I'm sure it'll come a time. When I would get to a new city, I would just go buy like 99 of the weapons and then just sell 99 of the weapons and I would just get oh. development level five. <laughs> oh, so it doesn't even, you don't even need to like go to different vendors. No, you don't, you don't even need to do quest. You just go and buy stuff and sell it and you're good to go. Oh, cool. Good to know. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So you can just kind of like <laughs> cheap it out that way. Um, but yeah, I, Xenoblade's uh, it's a uh, it's pretty fun. I'm glad you're. In, I did not expect you to enjoy it, but I'm I'm glad you are. Uh, and I guess I have we'll, to admit we'll, that the sprinkling of kind of adult humor is really helping. Yeah, like there's there's been multiple times when when you know it's very clear they're alluding to something that the game is not saying, and and it's really been kind of fun running into that pretty frequently. Have actually. you so that's been have you met Zeke yet? I don't think so. Okay, you'll know him when you meet him. Because he's all about the, the adult humor. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay, great. Both in-game and out of game, for sure. Uh, and so that's that's one weebdom to another weebdom. Uh, Zeke, how's how's the uh, persona life going, man? Uh, man. <laughs> I got to tell you, that game is for real. It's for real. It's yeah. a great game. I'm having a blast. Uh I'm probably taking a way longer time than anybody else in the history of fucking streaming has taken. I don't know. Uh, maybe not. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I just, it's just, a, uh, it's taking a long time because I'm, I'm really trying to do like play it how I would normally play it and not speed through anything. Um, I'm also reading, like reading all the lines, like every single line of dialogue and there's a fuck ton of it. Um, Is it voice acted? Partially. Some of it. Yeah. Partially. Yeah, partially. There's some parts that are, some parts that aren't. Um, for the most part, I would say, I don't know, I'd say it's probably like 60-40, 60 not voice acted, 40% voice acted, something like that. Yeah. Um, uh, it, unless you count, like, if you count, like, the text messages, then then it's way higher, because they don't talk, the text messages don't talk, obviously. <laughs> um, like, what, te text, but anyways. <laughs> yeah, on your phone, yeah, you get a text message on your phone. Yeah. Um, but... Uh, so I'm reading all of it, and I'm I'm in the third palace. I'm getting ready to face the third palace's boss. Mm. Um, and I don't know, I don't know, and I don't want to know how many palaces there are. But uh, I've seen like in chat, like, oh, it's a long way to go. Like it's it's yours, not even you know, <laughs> not even even close to the halfway point or whatever. So I'm like, all right, whatever. And it's because I'm, I take a long time, and I also fucking torture myself over decisions, like. You only like I don't know if we we discuss like you only have certain amount of time during the day to do things. Right. There are certain things that don't take time. And you really want to get those done, but every other action like buying stuff, selling stuff, vendors and stuff like that that doesn't take any time. But if you want to up your knowledge, that takes half the, the you only get two actions per day. That takes up half the day. If you yeah. want to up your relationship with a with a confidant like one of your friends. You want to up that relationship that takes half the day yep so you only get to do two of those things period every day and there are 50 fucking things you can do yeah and also so you have to sit there and go like oh my god i could i could go to the doctor and, and up my relationship with her or i could go it's raining out so i could go study and get my knowledge and and possibly some guts upgraded uh but it sounds like stardew valley but it's bad. The, yeah. It's totally like that. Yeah. Time management is fuck. It will fuck you. Exactly. Um, and I'm like, no, it's but it's it's 
raining, so I could go to the bathhouse, but I could also go to, and say, get the same bonus at the bathhouse on Monday because Monday's the bathhouse day. Like, you get a bonus. Well, fuck. And then I could, do, but I still have this DVD that I rented. I'm not kidding. I still have this DVD that I rented. And I haven't watched the DVD yet, and the and I've got to return it. No shit. I have to return a DVD, but I want to watch it before I return it because there's fucking late fees, and it's just like all this shit. It's what it's, would watch the you, like a bonus. It, it's like reading. It gives you like yeah. knowledge, guts, uh, uh, proficiency, stat like, bonuses, that, that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah that okay. kind of shit. Um, and you want to make good use of your time. Um, and that's why, like, once you get into a, uh, a palace or a dungeon, everything is just more relaxing because it's very, like, straightforward. Go, like, beat, beat enemies, progress through the dungeon, get treasures, go find the boss. <laughs> like, once you get there, it's like, okay, I don't have to worry about any time management, anything. I just, just go fight things and, you know, gain you experience and money. You said, uh late dvd and i that's one thing i remember from my time with the game very uh vividly is i would wake up and every morning i'd be like god that dvd's oh, late and i never returned it and it was severely late and i ended up paying like almost 90 or 100 percent of my gold that i had it was fuck this is so stupid okay go back just to just like 30 seconds or 40 seconds in this video uh okay nice nice freeze <laughs> is this too much um Maybe a little bit more back. This is you talking to them. Okay. Uh, we'll get to this. Uh, you'll, you'll see this. I just re I had just purchased something from this uh, confidant for a huge amount of money. Yeah. And then I went back and up my relationship. I sold it. Wow. And that one little like moment she reduced every single price in her thing by 50%. Yep. The game does that a lot. I just bought it. I was like, I saved up all this fucking money. I used every penny I had. I bought this thing. And then the next fucking interaction I had with her, she's like, guess what? Everything's 50% off from now on. I'm like, <laughs> you fucking asshole. God. What was damn. the item you bought? Uh, it was um, uh, a thing that regenerates your, your, your mana, your magic points. SP. SP. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds really good. But uh, you'll see, here it is. Half off discount. Oh my God. I <laughs> see my face just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm just so fucking pissed. Yeah. yeah. And of course, like me being stubborn, I'm like, they, you could just go back to a previous set. I'm like, nah, I'm going to, I'm going to bite the bullet on this one and take it in the shorts. Yeah. No safe scum, man. No safe's coming. That's right. No safe's right. Yep. Anyway, uh, it's fun. It's great. I'm having a blast with it. It's still, it's still a fucking fantastic game. It does it. It once you get um, used to everything, it there is a point where shit starts to kind of get repetitive. Right. In that they repeat. Yes. Explanations for shit over and over again. And that that's that gets really annoying. Like every time you get a new confidant, they're like, "Well, what's this whole palace thing all about?" And you're like. Well, let me tell you, and I'm like, fade, yeah. fade, fade out, fade in, fade out. Nope, you're gonna go through the entire thing and explain it again. Oh, they've fuck. done that in every Persona game, and it even gets to the point of uh, like just explaining, like you exactly like I said the palace stuff, but just the most mundane stuff they will explain fully, and you're just like, fuck, well, and shut up, just move on, goddamn. <laughs> yeah. Funny enough, it's actually especially for longer animes, it's very common for them to kind of rehash the story in different seasons right. so people can pick up and you know if they haven't watched it for a while they get back in i wouldn't be surprised with a game as long as persona 5 if they yeah. thought like hey maybe we should do this every so often so people can put the game down pick it back up in a few months and still be able to like you know get yeah. a little rehash of exactly what's going on and I'll turn that, that's well, an I absolutely exactly. completely understand why why they do it like that i totally get it it's just it, they probably don't expect someone to play it like as a job eight hours a day for right. like weeks at a time this well, is suppo probably so supposed to take normal people like months months to to a year you know if you were yeah. to play it a few hours a day kind of thing yeah i would also especially every few days i would also say for viewers it's probably kind of nice especially for a longer playthrough where they jump in and even though it sucks for you know the person playing the game like you said in a short amount of time people that join for the first time can be like oh 
Well, that's okay. That's why they're going to a palace. That's why that's happening. Blah, blah, blah. So I guess it makes sense for uh, that, but it just sucks. Hearing the same voice lines, hearing the same stuff explained over and over. But Oh, yeah. But yeah, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Uh, I think you get this question about a billion times every time you stream it. Are you going to finish it? Like, I want yeah, to. I'm actually wondering, like, how long have you streamed it so far, Z? I, uh, I can tell you right now. Let's see. And with the number JP's about a to tell lot. us, Z, I want to say like plus, 60 plus. 60 plus hours? Maybe. Um, You have streamed it. Hold on. It's loading. We're loading. <clears throat> Stand by. So after you hear this number, Zeke, do you still think like not you said you're getting a little it's getting a little bit repetitive. But do you still yeah. have that steam to do like potentially another 60 if that's how much it takes? As, yeah. as of right now, yes. Awesome. We should but actually it's, do it's, this. It's definitely going to be, it's going, I'm, I'm going to start uh, splitting it up, like doing morning of morning persona and then uh, four hours of something else after that. Nice. We should actually do this for uh, all of our stuff. I'll, I'll pull up the pages for everyone um, since it's kind of game of the year. Uh, material to talk about. So Zeke, did we'll just you say, did you say how many? No, no, I'm going to go down the list. We'll go down to your top five okay. games streamed in the past 365 days. Oh, cool. Okay. Uh, yep. Darkest Dungeon is your number one streamed game in terms of time. Doesn't surprise me at you all. Wanna, you want to guess how long? I think I looked at this recently and I think it's like, isn't it like four days total or something like that? Something like that? Six days? 187 hours streamed. Okay. Is that two okay. full playthroughs then? I don't know. Yeah, probably. Because that couldn't have been one. And I know I know you did a full playthrough for the Crimson Court, but did you do another one earlier in the year, maybe? When it, yeah, I think I did. Right when it... Uh, it maybe came right out... After the, oh, didn't it come out in very early January? Like officially released? I think oh, yes. I th yes. I think that's why... No, no, no. It came out before that. Oh. Because okay. it no, it came out in early January of last year. Because it was my my game of the year last year. That's right. Okay. If you remember, I remember. That's yeah. right. Yeah. 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 So I streamed it again, and then I once the um uh, the DLC came out, I streamed it again. So I'm I'm sure I did like two playthroughs. Yeah. Uh, and then number two was XCOM Two War of the Chosen at seventy four. Persona Five is third with sixty seven hours. Uh, Ten minutes shy of sixty eight hours so far. Damn. Yeah. I that's know. on the way to taking that second point <laughs> and and did you, did you did you i i don't know if you noticed the pattern in the top three games yeah all all turn-based yeah, all turn-based right. combat <laughs> well then there's number four and i don't know why you would do this to yourself but you played for honor for 43 hours <laughs> gotta get that money yeah, i guess that's true uh and then i liked playing it i had a good time playing it i mean i'm not gonna lie to you i had a lot of fun playing the game it's a, it was yeah. a, it was a decent game um it just so happened that the money coincided with a game that I kind of like playing. Yeah. And then uh, Use Your Words was 42, which you play that game kind of at the end of your streams for wow. sure. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a wind-down, cool-down game for sure. So for Co... I want to hear yours. Uh, oh, okay, mine's fine. We'll do yours, and then we'll do do mine. Uh, Co, number one, was PUBG at 359 hours, 40 minutes. It's about that makes sense. Makes I did. Sense. There was that a couple months at the beginning of the year when it's like there was nothing else to play. So yep. that's all I played, like, all day. Yep. Uh, I get time doing it. Two was Path of Exile, 123 hours. Uh, wow. This really? One, this one's surprising me. Neo was number three at 123 hours. Because I guess you did a normal playthrough than a PC playthrough? I did a normal 100% playthrough, and then I did a second normal playthrough, about 80%, and then I did all the DLC. Yeah. On the, and the, that was both on PS4 Pro and PC. Uh, number four, not surprising, Divinity Original Sin 2, 121 hours for that. Uh, number five, again, I don't know why you did this to yourself, but you played for 113 hours, 10 minutes shy of 114 hours, Mass Effect Andromeda. <laughs> what and I fuck? enjoyed every goddamn minute of it. <laughs> yeah, it was a good game. Like 80 to 90% of it. Yeah, oh but it was, it was, I mean, yeah, that was, it was, uh, I, that was, that was, that's, that's cool. I'm uh, okay with that. Okay Mine makes sense, I guess, because it's what we do on the show or what we do on the channel. D&D, uh, &D, 426 hours. Makes sense. We do a lot of shows. Uh, Path of Exile, 271. Uh, third was Final Fantasy 14, 207. I didn't realize I streamed that game that much. That's 
That's a lot. Damn. Uh, well, 24 of that was a, was a ma marathon, right? Yeah. Yeah. 24 hours of that. <laughs> well, Good we point. did. We also did. How many the, of them did you do? Yeah. We did 10, 10 sponsored streams plus the 24 hours. Oh, that's Jesus. right. Yeah. That's right. So that's basically your Zeke's for Honor. Yeah. Yeah. But and I actually enjoyed the game, you know. <laughs> I like for honor. <laughs> no, me no hey, I'm fucking fair, with you. Me, and Zeke, me and Zeke got some for honor games in and it, he was having yeah. a good time. Okay. Yeah, like it, right. it was if you once do I well in to get it and bad. Yeah. Once you like find your character that you're like, okay, I know how to do these moves and I know how to counter other people's yep. moves, it becomes really fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh I this is surprising, but it makes sense, I guess. 147 hours streamed was Dota 2 at number four. There was that stretch of time where, stuff with day nine, though, right? Uh, not really. I no, this was all just. It was when you were filling your time with PUBG. I was filling my time with Dota too. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yep. yep. Yeah. And we barely talked about it on the show because you. I think you were a little embarrassed. <laughs> um, it wasn't embarrassed. It was just the fact that my time with Dota two. Even looking back now, a lot of it was just like rage. It was just like I, I was. He's one of those self-hating Dota players. Yeah, I was so upset that I would queue up to forget the bad times that just happened the hour previous, uh, previously. So, uh, and then number five was talk shows, 146, which I think is probably just all drop frames. Um, and then, funny enough, number six, we didn't talk. Or number six, we didn't talk about for you guys, but Overwatch, 116 hours. Nothing else even came close to any of that. Uh, cool. So. So yeah, I think, uh, should we just get started with our, I, the other, I've been playing Path of Exile. Uh, there's no, yeah. I, Have you beaten the Shaper again yet? No. Uh, I am not really even that close. Uh, but. Really? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I Where, farmed where are you? Um, I'm doing like tier 14, tier 15 maps. I'm kind of finishing that list. And uh, basically right now I'm just making money. I got. I've for, had a, for what? You get like your big axe that was really expensive. I already bought no, that. No, off of yeah. his viewers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've already. Uh, yeah, the, I bought it Zeri's disfavor for like three seventy nine chaos, which is a huge deal for that. It's usually like four forty. Um, and then I've just been farming, and I've gotten pretty lucky with drops. Like last night, I got an item that sells for seven exalts, so I sold that. So I'm at like ten exalts with like two hundred and fifty chaos, and probably like seven or 800 chaos invested in the character. So it's been going pretty what good this season. Uh, I need to six L my disfavor. I need to six L my chest. I need mm. to kind of just pick up a couple other items to kind of finish out the build. And then I'll probably push for shaper. Um, I've done the elder fight twice, but there's three different tiers of elder. There's like the, the white, yellow and red tier. And I've done white and yellow. The red tier is like the tier 11 plus, And it's, it's a lot more, a lot harder. So, what do you think of the fights? Uh, they're pretty cool. Uh, I, I don't know if the tier three version adds anything new or if it's just more of the, the actual fight, but uh, it's it's pretty cool for sure. Um, I still think Shaper is like one of the, the cooler fights uh, that I've seen um, or that I've done. Um, I haven't done any of the other stuff like Vault Pyramid or Uber at Ziri or anything like that. So, uh, nice. But yeah, we can move on from Path. To non-Path of Exile streamers, they're just like, is he speaking another language? What is happening right now? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, I'm, that dude, I'm loving it. it. Yeah. Great. That happens that's when you get deep in any game. Yeah. I'm really like, there's There's just lingo in, in Persona 5 that I could just probably spout off. Yeah. And you would be like, uh, okay. And then you could use similar words. Like, yeah. or chaos, you could just say gold or money units money units exactly chaos yeah. orbs money units it uh i was telling zeke squiggle bugs i was telling zeke Space before bug. the show that uh it i haven't done this with a game since i like probably wow world of warcraft back in its heyday of like trying to go to sleep but constantly thinking about the game and then literally getting up because i have this stroke of genius walking to the computer sitting down logging into poe and saying, what the fuck am I doing? And alt f and forcing myself to go to sleep. That's been about the past, the past week every night. It's, it's gotten real bad. So, uh, and it's fun also watching Ko's kind of, get, you're getting into maps now, getting a little bit deeper. Dan got to maps yesterday. Uh, I'm hoping you guys get the, the full on POE bug and, and push to Shaper as well, but we'll see. Yeah, well, me and Dan are both playing SSF characters too. Yeah. So it's going to be getting, getting to Shaper. If I actually beat Shaper on this character, on this SSF guy, I'm going to be ecstatic. I'm not planning on it. I'm going to try, 
That sounds for solo self found, which means no help, no outside help. Yes, and the way yeah. the proper way to say it is uh, SSF. By the way, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that's how you, you have to get that little hand at the end there. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But yeah, it's uh, it's basically playing the game single player. For those that don't know, pretty much. Yeah. It's like playing it all. Well, uh, how about this? Say SSF uh, BTW is like saying uh, is like telling everyone you own a Prius. Pretty much. Yeah. Like, then going. Yeah, I own a Prius, <laughs> by the way. So yeah, but, yeah it's very South Park, very smug. Uh, admittedly, I I could never play SSF because like the game for me is all about power gains, and power gains in SSF are so few and far between that I would fucking just drive myself mad. Like you're kind of beating your head against a wall for a lot of the stuff that I would imagine. Co, I haven't watched too much of your stream, but just the power struggle there of like, God damn it, I can't do this fucking map because I'm using this fucking terrible item and nothing else will drop. <laughs> it's well, it, it's interesting because you're absolutely right. And what's even crazier is I'm playing what's called a Glacial Cascade Inquisitor, which actually relies on a few very specific uniques for its max power. Right. Uh, also some synergies that it uses. But here's the thing. It, it's, it's a ratio. So there's no question that I don't get as many power increases, but when you're playing SSF and that unique does drop that you need, you're just like, Sure. Yeah. Yes. You know, it, it feels so good. And, yeah. and it, that's happened like twice in my game so far. And what's even what's cooler also that I really like about SSF is you have to it, it's more like a puzzle because you have to you basically just have to do the best you can with what you get. And since you can't just go out and buy anything else, a lot of times you'll have to either make sacrifices or change the way you play even sometimes to get around certain bosses or maps just because you don't have anything else available to you. And you'd never have to do that if you could just buy you yeah. know, random stuff. Like I'm running into the weirdest issues just because I don't have enough basic currencies that I and I can't just go buy more. Like scouring orbs. I'm having a huge issue with maps because I don't have enough scouring orbs. Yeah. And it's it's like yeah. you know these little tiny things that most people don't have to worry about um, become big issues. And yep. uh, it's been it's been fun. It's been fun. Yeah, I spent uh, the better part of last night uh, buying. Well, not buying, but I already had two stashes, setting them to like one alk and two alk uh, whenever I throw an item in there. And just throwing a bunch of like tier one to five maps in there because I ran out of alks. So I far I like sold up to a hundred alks, which was nice in about an hour because I didn't have to do anything for those. And now I can go back to mapping on, on some of the higher stuff. But yeah, I gotta I, say, man, yeah. watch, watching your build like that, I've you have given me a lot of ideas for my next character. It only like, gets I'm already I'm, too. That's insane. That's the insane part of it. I do. Better. I know. But just the speed with the fact that you just never have to stop moving and yeah. that everything around you gets hit. Like there's so many things about that build that are just. Oh, it's, it's so nice. It's so nice. The yeah. the one regret last night, uh, when I play off stream, I'm, I'm always a little bit regretful because if something drops, like, and someone even tweeted this when I tweeted that I got the drop last night. People don't get to see my reaction. So, like, that item drop last night, I had no idea what it was. And I was like, oh, it's just some fucking random chess piece. I'll put that in my inventory and see what it, like, go over to POE trade and type in the item and hit enter and, like, scroll down. And the first one's, like, 600 chaos. And I'm like... Wait, what? <laughs> Scroll down a little bit more. It's like seven, eight exalted. I fucking start freaking out in my room <laughs> by myself. No one else lives with me. And I'm just like fucking screaming at the top of my lungs. And I was like, fuck, I wish that was streamed. Like, I wish I had that captured somewhere on the stream. But anyways, that's, awesome. that's enough POE talk. Uh, we'll both be playing it for the remainder of the year and probably in 2018 as well. So. I think it's time. I think Stay we should start a new fandom POE episode coming next year, right? That's actually not about it. Yeah. Yeah. I might do that. Maybe for the next league. Uh, I think it's time we start. I think that we should get the game of the year show on the road because we only have uh, three hours and 20 minutes left. Games of the year. show. Games of the year. It's very important. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we have <laughs> we have some different categories. We've got best graphics, best multiplayer, best music, best story, biggest disappointment, uh, our community top three. Our community top oh, 10. Oh, yeah, I'm excited to see what they think, too. Yeah, I haven't looked at those. Big shout-out to my mods uh, and Daniel and um, Cross-Eyed Jack for making all that stuff and everyone else for voting as well. I have the percentages uh, for breakdown of that stuff uh, as well, which we'll go into. And then we have our personal top 10. So let's start with... Uh, let's go multiplayer first. Uh, we'll jump down That's multiplayer, here. multiplayer, okay. Yeah. Now, this one for me, I was telling Zeke this, this one was hard for me because there weren't that many multiplayer games that fit into our criteria this year that I was like super excited about. I, I don't know about you guys, uh, if it was difficult for you, but this one was tough for me. Um, I guess how we're going to do this, by the way, is we'll just go one, two, three. And if there's duplicates, it's whatever. If not there, it's, it's fine. But um, I had a really hard time for another reason. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, 
is your reason do you have to talk about your your multiplayer game of the year for it to be a reason or can you kind of allude to it oh no we can we can well, i do, well my reason is i don't play a lot of multiplayer games <laughs> sure okay all right uh well yeah let's let's see if this thing's working and i'll reveal my best multiplayer of the game of the year i think zeke would probably be on board with this i don't know if co will be i'm gonna hit this button see if it works hey it worked my multiplayer game of the year was star trek bridge crew Cause, yes cause, good fucking choice man because i didn't know Great. what else it would be like wow a vr game made it into a top spot holy shit i know that it's was my number it. two that was my number two my number two was sure. mario kart 8 deluxe that's how many multiplayer games <laughs> i played this year <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it uh star trek bridge crew man i we didn't play it. I think maybe it was under 10 hours or so total between me, Zeke, Scoots, and, and Aaron uh, that we did our the campaign, I guess, of Bridge Crew. I hope they put out DLC, but I had a fucking blast playing it, man. It was, hey, hey uh, JP. What's that? Can you make me a little smaller in this? In this Are game? you feeling a little bit too big? Yeah. I'm, I'm, gonna... feeling, I'm feeling huge. Okay. I'm going to have to do this for everyone. Hello, little man. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> there you uh, go. Thank you. But yeah. Star Trek, oh, Star Trek Bridge yeah, Crew, man. I totally forgot beer one second okay uh i get a beer uh dude this was one of the i gotta say this is one of my my most fun times i've spent on twitch doing something with somebody else maybe ever i had so much fun being the captain with you guys and everybody you scoots and uh Raylian, yep were like we all sunk into the roles and it was so much fun so much fun like, oh my god just and just just be like trying to think like a captain and come up with like like you know star trek captainy kind of things to say funny quips and and that kind of stuff calling everybody mister yeah it was good man it uh i don't want to turn this into a vr discussion but it's the only right. vr game where i've thought back and really appreciated the fact that it could only have been done in vr like a lot yep. of the VR games is kind of like, yeah, like I, it's, it's cool, but I could just play an FPS and probably enjoy that game more so. Um, but with Bridge Crew, like, I don't think you could do any of that unless it was in VR. Like the idea of well, being in that, the, the fucking ship and like being in that place made that game. And they did such a good job with just having the fucking like random noises off to the side and having the positional sound. So when Zeke's talking to me, He's back in my back right, and he sounds like he's yelling at me in my back right. And if I turn to face him, he's then yelling at me in my face. Like, it was real fucking cool to hear that stuff. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that, that was my, my best moment. And I liked, how they, I liked how they divvied up the responsibilities in such a way that it, it felt like everybody was absolutely fucking necessary to totally. get, the, get the mission done. The only complaint I would, ever, uh, I would have about it is more missions. Just more of that right more of what we got because we only had like like four right and then the, the kobayashi maru which was you know the unwinnable battle supposedly I, i've heard there's some way to cheat it but um <laughs> yeah but yeah like i wish there was more of it yeah it uh i'm really wondering how it sold because the other cool thing is that the three of us were playing on psvr and scoots was playing on pc with his with i think it was his vive and we could play together so yeah. it's yep. It, that's like something I think for VR games that everyone's going to have to start doing moving together is, is having like a universal way to play cross platform. Uh, it's super important. Unfortunately, the industry has moved the opposite direction it since has. then. You're, you're totally right. You're totally right. But yeah, but it was a great initiative. It was. <laughs> I, I hope they put out DLC for that. I, I just don't ever expect them to. I don't know if the, the license is expired or whatever, but uh, co let's do your multiplayer game of the year. Now, before we put on the screen, uh, I yeah. did not play a lot of multiplayer games this year. In fact, my choices were literally on one hand. So um, it was kind of a, uh, I had to pick the best of what I've played. And uh, it was a little bit weird for me because there were definitely a couple games that I didn't play that I felt could have taken this spot. Yeah. But I didn't play them, so I couldn't do that. So anyway. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hope I press this button and exploit doesn't crash. Yeah. Okay. That makes now, I, got lucky. I got lucky <clears throat> yeah. because yeah. Uh, th if this game wouldn't have come out yesterday, I actually, in the response field to JP, I put like, if it's out, then this. If it's not out, then Destiny 2, which would have been my backup. 
Oh, and uh, yeah, okay. the reason being, I know. Now the reason being, I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit. Now, player unknown battlegrounds um, gets a lot of flack these days. Gets a gets a lot of shit. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, I know player unknown. I knew him before he was big and popular. We all know. Uh, yeah. It's a dude that uh, really stands behind, really stands behind what he wanted to do. And to put it bluntly, I put in three hundred hours and I kept playing. So it's it's really hard to say, you know, when you've played a game as long as that, that you can't at least like. I had fun playing it. And the big thing here, and this is the really big thing, easily two thirds of my hours in this game were community games that I was either playing with all of my subs and viewers or I would shout casting to them as a show. So it's the kind of thing where this is a little bit of a special case uh, for me in terms of what it was able to offer. And then, you know, the spectator camera was huge. The fact that they were they were putting in spectator updates when it wasn't even available to the public yet. Like there was there was a lot of really good positive things that happened to Battlegrounds. So um, and just real quick about Destiny 2. The only reason Destiny 2 was a consideration for me was because that was the easiest game that was out there for me to play with my subs and viewers. Yeah. I mean, I could just drop in. I, they'd all pop on my friends list. I'd have a full group within seconds and I'd be playing the game. So it's it's the kind of thing where, you know, I didn't have a lot of options. Worked with what I could. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like uh, I'm glad PUBG ends up somewhere on this show because it kind of like it was a probably the biggest game of 2017 in terms of just like impact on the gaming world i hate to say it man it's cool to hate on PUBG right now it is yeah that's yeah. that's the thing like that's what's in that's what's cool is oh don't like PUBG because it's like the big monolith so it's the kind of thing where you know you, you got to give credit where it's due that's yeah. that's what i saw with it, it got to give credit where it's due and it it's is, a good game it was, it's fucking fun dude even it's even sure, a non-shooter yeah. type like me when i was playing i had a fucking blast there was like moments of terror moments of elation <laughs> panic all that kind of stuff was all wrapped into like a game and it was it's a fucking good game it's fun yeah also kind of funny by the way what i have found nine times out of ten. Oh man PUBG sucks you hate i hate PUBG. it's the worst game ever oh really how much have you played it oh you know about 150 hours but it's exactly. terrible 100 yeah 100 percent. Oh, okay so it's a terrible how, how long have you watched it oh probably 300 hours but i didn't like any of it <laughs> yeah yeah I, I stopped playing PUBG a long time ago, and I still put on streams. Yep. I, f I feel like both the gaming world and especially the Twitch world would be completely different this year if PUBG had never come out. It would have, like, I, d I don't know what it would look like. It, and it's going to shape PUBG all has of... made over 20 streamers. Yeah. Like, made them. Like, and they, were, they were non-existent before PUBG, and that's all they do now, and now they're big. Yep. So, yeah, it's it's going to completely change 2018 yeah. as well. It, it's kind of like the... I don't want to get into like the league. It's the league slash Dota effect for BR games. Like you're going to see a billion fucking BR games come out in the next. And we already have league and Dota with PUBG and Fortnite now. Yeah, exactly. Quickly coming up right behind them. They're now, they're now publicly like publicly going over about all these big goals and numbers they're hitting. And the PUBG guys are just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, glad that, uh, I'm glad that ended up on someone's list. Zeke, let's do your best mold. Cause I have no, Again, let uh, I should state this. I have no idea what these guys have selected. I purposely uh, had them send it to me in a text file, and then I sent that straight to Dana without looking at anything. So one, yes, I hope made sure not to know any of these. So so JP is totally surprised by these. I hope these graphics are correct. And two, I uh, I'm I hope I'm surprised. So Zeke, uh, your if you your think about it, if, if you think about it, you'll you'll know what it is. Go ahead and throw it up. All right, probably words with friends. Yep, use your words. Use your words. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. Okay. Use your words. Uh, this game came out of nowhere. It was a. Uh, it's it seemed like a, another Jackbox game. The reason why this game is my favorite multiplayer is because anybody can play it. Anybody mm. can play it. All you have to do is try and be clever, try and be funny. Uh, it has something for everybody. It has great, uh, great uh, viability on Twitch. Um, it's easy to jump in and play. You don't have to own the game. Only one person has to own the game in order to play the game. Um, it's fun. It's funny. Uh, I just, I have played so many hours of it, and I still am, am having fun playing with it every time I pick it up. Every time I put it on, it's always yeah. just like, a, like I play a game for like six, seven hours. I'm like, all right, let's wind down with some use your words. And I... 
just uh I'm, I'm in full relax mode we're laughing we're drinking we're having a good time you can play it with children you can play it with uh like elderly people you can play with anybody there's family mode uh all kinds of stuff the another thing that really kind of blew me away about this game is that um if you can't come up with answers if you can't if you don't think you're very clever or you or you're getting stumped on one of the things you're like man i can't think of anything funny or clever you can put house answer, like you put house decoy and you pick that. It puts an answer in for you and they're good. The <laughs> fucking house decoy answers are fucking clever and good. Nice. And f- and they will fool you into thinking like, oh, that's not a house answer because it's too good. It's too clever. It's, it's a little subversive. It's a little dirty, you know? And it... That amazed me. So it made it viable for anybody to play, even if you're, even if you can't come up with something at the given time, you can just put that in, and it's great. Um, and you can play it on your your phone, your tablet, whatever you want. It's just so accessible, and it's so much fun. Every game is like 30, 35 minutes. One game is 30, 35 minutes, and then you start over again. It's fucking, it's fantastic. Yeah, I like. Uh, I also like their website. Use your words dot lol. That's their URL. <laughs> no, the, I got it's, word, it's words game dot lol, right? Uh, well, maybe use your words dot lol. Oh, well, well, yeah, use your words dot lol. Words game dot lol is how you enter into the game. That's right. Ah, ah. What were we gonna say? Yeah, it's like going to Jackbox dot TV if you want to get into a Jackbox game. This one is words game dot lol if you want to get into the game. But also, yes, use use your words dot lol. Yeah. Co, what were we gonna bring up? Oh, I was gonna say, you know, I I raid Zeke a lot. I there there you know you get to get to know how someone casts and how they do. Watching Zeke play use your words is just fun. Like it's it's the entire thing is basically just laughing. To put it bluntly, laughing at either what he's doing or what's going on in the screen or what other people are doing. It's just a giant just basically laughing the whole time. It's yeah. it's really fun to watch. There's not a lot of yeah. games, very very few games like that. So nice. very entertaining. Uh, I gotta say that you a- I mean bring it to your next family function. I'm not kidding. Bring it to your next family function. If you got like five other family members that you think would play, it's fucking fun, dude. Yeah. Now it comes on uh, Xbox, Steam, PlayStation. Oh, and it's also on Apple TV, but it's not on mobile yet, right? It's not a fully mobile game, so you have to have one of those platforms. Eat. Yeah, you have to have something like. Well, you have to have a screen that everybody can see. Oh, okay, okay. That's the thing. Like basically, your your phone, your tablet, or your or your browser is the way you answer but you have to have something like the screen that everybody can look at gotcha well cool yeah. that's uh that's a pretty good spread of games right there star trek player unknown and user words uh i think that's pretty... Dude, you're not going to get more of a spread yeah a social game uh like a blockbuster and a vr star trek game like, yeah yeah it's, it's pretty much every base covered in some degree it is it is yeah. uh all right so let's jump to Let's jump to story. Are we going to do all the categories? We'll do all the categories first, and then we'll do okay. uh, we'll do our game of the year. Sorry, I have to resize you for everyone. Uh, we'll do okay. our game, or our top ten, and then we'll do the community top ten last. So, okay. uh, Zeke, I started first, so you start first this time. Okay, what is this? Oh, best story. story? Best story, yeah. Okay. Uh, best story. It's it's. I hate I I hate that I didn't actually play this on stream. Uh, because every once in a while I'll play games that that are just my wine like like when I'm in bed alone I just want to like you know have something to, to tool around in maybe wander around do some stuff whatever yeah but uh, this game I'm uh, I'm glad I got in depth with it and I didn't feel rushed go ahead all right now I'm gonna hit two buttons here because I know that your game is the same as mine and Co is it the same what you're guessing is his. Because if so, I'll try for a three button press. It might be. I'm gonna. Yeah, Zeke I'm, played a couple games. Zeke played a couple games off stream. So I'm. I did. Yeah, we'll have to see. I'm gonna go for. But three I button, think it might be. I'm gonna go for a three button press. Do it. One okay. to see if it breaks X split. Two to see if it's all the same. Okay. Here we go. Nope. <laughs> so that's good. Me and Zeke both did Horizon Zero Dawn and, and Co. I think everyone kind of expected that. But let's talk Horizon Zero Dawn. And then we'll talk uh, Divinity Original Sin. Zeke, go ahead. Horizon, Horizon Zero Dawn had, I got to say, an original story. Um, 
and when I when I say original story, I know there's elements that have been told for a long time. Like the the post apocalyptic, you know, primitive, whatever. But the way it was told to me was so fantastic, piece by piece, piecing it together. And that's only talking about uncovering what happened right. to the world. Um the tribal stories in and of themselves the little mini stories the the telling of the story of a, of a like at the very beginning of a girl and her father figure and stuff like that like the way they laid that out and the way the voice acting and and the the way the uh, um the facial recognition not facial recognition what is it called the motion they, capture type stuff there, there, there you go uh, facial mapping, yeah. yeah facial mapping. facial mapping there you go was fantastic uh, I loved piecing it together as I went along. Every single like vault that you went into, it was were they vaults? I can't remember the name of them. Uh, the cauldrons and stuff. Yeah, cauldrons. cauldrons yeah. yeah, every single cauldron would reveal more of the story. You pick up things as you went along. Um, there was so much, so much flavor lore um, out in just out in the fucking world that you would stumble upon and be like, "Oh shit, this is something that how would I ever fucking find this?" You'd actually have to know where it is to find it. Because it's just outlaying in the fucking world. Like, the important shit you can find easily. But the outside flavor stuff you find just wandering around. Um, and, man, it was just... I was really happy with how they handled the end, the, the, the end of the world. And yeah. finding out what Zero Dawn actually means. Yeah, I, I think for me, uh, it was... The other games that I had on my list, number two, because I, I listed out top three uh, for whatever reason. Number two was Persona 5. I didn't finish. And number three was Assassin's Creed Origins. It was a good story, but it was kind of, it wasn't like the main focus of that game, I, I don't feel. I feel like with Horizon Zero Dawn, that game was created to tell the story that it told. And like everything kind of came second to that, at least the way that I experienced the way I played it. Um, and it was the only game this year that had a story that, I wanted to finish no matter what, even if it was off stream, et cetera. I don't care too much about the DLC because for me, the story was kind of complete. And the very last thing that happens in that game really pisses me off. And it is a reason why it doesn't end up in a lot of the other stuff where it kind of says like, but wait, there's more. Like I wanted it to just fucking end right where it ended because I felt like it was You're such a do what? Are you talking Assassin's Creed? No, no. I'm talking Horizon Zero Dawn. Like the way oh, it ends. Right. Yeah. All the way it ends, piss you off? Yeah, because it's like it you didn't ends. like the little after part? No, because it means there's more, and I don't want more. I wanted the story to like be done right there, because everything up until that point was so <laughs> fucking good, and I, I was so interested to uh, just like Zeke said, like experience why the f what the fuck happened to the world, because it did such a thing where, like a lot of games, at least that we've all played, do like right after the world ends. This is like so far beyond after the world ends that it's like the world beginning again. Uh, and, and like Zeke said, that was a unique thing uh, story-wise to experience. So for me, it was this was the game that immediately came to mind for best story. Uh, I don't care too much about the DLC. I haven't played it. Um, you guys said it adds some stuff, but it's kind of a lore dump uh, at the very end. So the gameplay for me... Yeah, I didn't, and, I didn't yeah, get to the yeah. end of the DLC yet. Yeah. yeah. But uh, it, does, it doesn't... It seems like a standard. It seems like it's just like an, a side... A long side quest for yeah. me. It, that's what it seemed like. Uh -huh. um, and people, a lot of people in chat were talking about uh, uh, near as far as the story goes. Um, I played through. I played through near one time. Now, that was is not like how you're supposed to do. It. You're supposed to play it through it like two or three times. Right. And so I couldn't, in good faith, put that in contention for my best story. Because I felt like I didn't finish the game. Yeah. So, and now, I'm sure Coke can talk more about that because you did that, right? And I didn't play well, near at all. Say, so that's also but okay. Yeah. Go ahead, Coke. I played. Um, <clears throat> I played near all the way to the end. End. And I think many of you guys will understand when I say I played to the the end. Where there's kind of no going back. Hmm. Um, and I have to say, there, there's here's here's the way I looked at it. Um, I really enjoyed the story of near. It was it was a great story however i felt that the story of near was doing more things that were interesting and unique instead of them being good story elements the ending of near in my opinion 
now that I've been through it and without spoilers, is one of the most iconic endings I've ever played. There is especially the very end, for those that know what I'm talking about. And don't get me wrong, that's amazing. It's awesome. But I do still feel that my pick had a better story than Nier. Um, and and should I go right into mine, JP? Yeah, yeah, by all means. Okay. I, well, we're so, not going to do the three button press because I was totally off yeah. by you putting... <laughs> <laughs> that was, yeah, that was that was that was my bad. Um, so okay, so Divinity Original Sin two kind of took me by surprise. You know, I had not finished Divinity Original Sin one before I played it, and uh, when I started Divinity Original Sin two, I kind of went in saying I want I missed the bus with Divinity Original Sin. I, I'm going to do 100 percent of this run. I want to experience everything there is to do, and I really want to dive in. Divinity Original Sin two is one of the most amazing storytelling gaming experiences I've ever played. Not only is the main story incredible but when you start getting towards the later acts you're talking about multiple twists and turns that were unexpected bringing in the other game in ways you never would have anticipated um not only that but you have six characters each with basically their own single player adventure i mean literally you could take any one of these initial characters and they that could be the game like you could have a game around those characters with their character quest being the game and you have six of them on top of an epic game in general. And they all tie in and they work together and they flow through. And even if you're not using one of the characters, you can still experience and engage in their story. I mean, it is it is a masterwork of CRPG storytelling. And um, I played it for 117 hours and I, I'm thinking about doing another playthrough next year. Yeah. Uh, it is, it, was, it, it kind of to me was, was, you could, there's sometimes you can just play a game when you're done with it, you, you can tell the people that made this game absolutely loved what they did and that's one of those games yeah my issue, biggest you can issue, play this multiplayer too right sure can maybe next year maybe next year man that's a long multiplayer <laughs> shit that's a shit done. if you can handle it yeah jesus that, that's <laughs> uh, i'm playing persona dude i can handle anything now the uh, you know what good point you kind of leveled up in my eyes with that yeah i'm just saying man <laughs> yeah I, I never thought you'd do a 60 plus hour rpg playthrough this is this is cool man this is like a whole new leaf either yeah <laughs> that's true yeah for, for me divinity is one of those games where i wish i could like force myself to sit down and play it for 120 plus hours but i i just i've loaded it up i can hear myself talking i'm going to force through this <laughs> go if you want to turn down your speakers but uh yeah i loaded it up walked around for about five minutes and was like god this is a big game and i closed closed it i just i couldn't dude it, it can be intimidatingly big yeah I'm, I'm like one of the only reasons i was able to get through the 100 the 100 is because i started like the entire scope was established at the beginning and uh, even with that, there were times that I was overwhelmed throughout yeah. the playthrough. And dude, I, I have a I have a list exactly like you do. Games that I would love to play, but every time I start them, something comes along. Something like for me, it's a game called Hollow Knight. I've started that game three times. I know it's a great game. Everyone tells me it's awesome, but I, I have not had I've not been able to sit down and play through it. Um, one day. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, it's pretty telling that Horizon for me was a quote long game. And it was like what forty hours, maybe. It, I I don't remember the exact oh, run I, run time of that. Just over thirty. Yeah. Okay. It wasn't that long at all. So for four times that, there's no fucking way I'll play the original sin from start to finish for sure. Uh, Zeke, you want to say anything before we move on? Nope. Okay. I thought you were gonna jump because you did you play? Uh, no, the I wanted. At all? I, it, I I played a little bit of it. Okay. But it, it was it was same thing that you had. Um, it was. Too much game and not, it, and this will be a, a recurring theme for me. It was too much game and it didn't go ha! like right away to me. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, let's move on and go to, we've done. Oh, so uh, that's what I wanted to ask you. Uh, when are we going to do like the audience thing at the end of this? I think we'll do that after our top 10, because I think a lot of the games that'll be in there will be in our top 10 as well. And I'd rather talk. talk. Yeah. I'd rather talk about those then and then be like, Oh, the audience chose this. Although, I have seen some of the audience choices and some of those games I don't think will show up in there. So uh, we'll do those at the very end, very end of the show. Uh, let's jump over to graphics and I'll make Zeke smaller again. Every time we jump scenes, I got to make them smaller. Uh, we've both started. So Co, why don't you start with your, your best graphics slash art direction of the year? Okay. Best graphics and art oh. direction. Now, before we go, go before ahead. we go on, please. we have to do a disclaimer for, for a couple of these. Yeah. Um, 
because game devs will get fucking up your ass about this. We are novices when it comes to certain things like graphics and art design. Uh, I know they're different. We know they're different categories. It's just kind of a lump of those. I we know they're diff totally different things. Okay, so forgive us for the for being layman okay. because yes. we're gonna do like best music and and sound design or whatever the fuck as well. Another category, and we know those are different as well. So just okay, give us a little also, forgiveness. Funny, funny enough, Zeke, you actually just said exactly what I was going to a lot better than I was going to. I was basically going to say that also this category in general, best graphics could mean prettiest. It could also mean like the most impressive environments. It could also mean best direction. It could also mean stylized, like Cuphead. Like this this is a very all-encompassing category. Yeah. And we all have our own reasons for our choices. So I think we'll be talking about that here. And I'll, let me go ahead and start. Yeah, I'll, I'll be very surprised if the three of us have the same game here. So. Oh, I don't think we will. I don't think in fact, will. Um, let's go ahead and start with mine. Okay. Uh, so my pick um, actually is the reason that I picked this game was because actually a few reasons that were already mentioned. And that is I really felt they did a great job crafting the world. As somebody who is a, a really big fan of seeing the different types of takes on this type of world and having it be one of my favorite types of world, I always really focus and try to look into how these companies craft their post-apocalyptic environments. So for me, my best graphics in our direction was actually Horizon. Uh, it was Horizon Zero Dawn. And the reason being is because this game did an excellent job of making the world believable. They, they made it lived in. They took the, the remnants of the previous civilization and tied them into the new tribal environments. Their structures were made of, uh, of ripped up pieces of the old world. You could travel through old world buildings and they looked lived in and they were yeah. destroyed in realistic ways. And it was it even through the DLC, even up through my 100 percent run of the base game and the DLC, I frequently got up to points in the game where I was just like panning around environments going, this looks. Um, now, I, I do have to say that. Uh, oh, go ahead. Uh, one other thing I wanted to mention was the you got you looked at the like the viewpoints or whatever those I can't remember what those are called oh, yeah. the little eyeball symbols yeah that I thought that was a fucking sweet touch to see the old world yeah like love you would get up on a on a like a you know a scenic view and then you'd look through the eye of like how it used to look and it was just fucking cool to like take it down and see it like dilapidated and like crumbled yep. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. And also, I really loved the uh, the the harsh schisms between these tribal cities you'd run through. And then mere minutes later, you'd be in an underground abandoned techno base, you know, basically running through like metal corridors with all this machinery and crazy previous stuff. And that dichotomy that where you're constantly moving through the futuristic past and the primitive future uh, was really appealing to me. And, I, and, oh, yeah. and as a huge fan of, of post apocalyptic worlds, I really enjoyed the take. Yep. So that for me was best graphics. I do, as an honorable mention to this, uh, I do want to say that the extremely lived in and some of the best environment design I've ever seen from Wolfenstein 2 was really close for me here. It was, it was, it was very close because I have to say, again, some of the best environment I've ever seen was in Wolfenstein 2. But at the end of the day, Horizon beat it out for me. Yep. Yeah, this game was my, because uh, again, I did top three. I listed this one as third. Uh, it Everything you just said, I, I echo 100%. It... There was something I, or a story I read a couple months back where uh, it was impressive because they didn't just do the snow textures. They did the textures beneath the snow. So if you walked over in the snow, you could see stuff below it. And I was just kind of like, oh, right. The games don't do that. That's right. <laughs> they don't do that at all. Um, so I, I'm right there with you and everything you said. Uh, Zeke, I'll go next and you'll go last this time. And then we'll start. Okay. With me. okay. Uh, so my game, the, when this gets brought up best graphics slash art direction it is the game i immediately think of for 2017 it is a game that i think people will not be surprised by whatsoever especially the three of you or the two of you uh it is if i'm on the right thing it's cuphead it has to be cuphead like there's i i think that saying that cuphead's graphics are great is kind of a disservice because it's fucking art it is like <laughs> art direction. It is art just, direction. Yeah, absolutely. It is insane how fucking amazing that game looks um, and plays. It because it feels like I'm playing like the fucking cartoons that I grew up watching in a game. 
which is just mm-hmm. insane to me. Um, not even no, you guys yeah. like honestly, you guys have my 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 two and three for sure. Really? Okay. Yeah, it uh, just a just a fucking flawless game when it comes to art direction and everything. Every character in there is memorable. Uh, the fucking the the devil is awesome. The guy before the devil, uh, whose name I'm fucking blanking on, uh, Mr. King Dice. Yeah, King Dice is just like a so. It's just beautiful. The whole game was just. I the reason I kept going in that game was because I wanted to see more art direction from it. Oh wait, uh, Mark sorry. Disney. It's it's such a beautiful thing. It is. Yeah, yeah. What were we gonna say? Uh, when I said two, uh, when I said two and three, I'm sorry. I meant uh, two two and four. Pardon me. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. yeah I, I don't know if anything else really needs to be said. It's just what if the first time I saw this game and I think the first time everyone sees this game, is just like, holy fucking shit. That's not a video game. There's no way. And then you play it and run around it and just like, wow, uh, just blown away. And then I'm a little not biased. Only is this a game, it's a good game. Yeah. I'm a little biased too, because they, they did a smart thing marketing wise, putting out that video of them showing like how the hand drawn stuff works. Um, and I'm not discrediting, you know, people that make Horizons Zero Dawn or any other games out there in terms of the actual graphical work, but seeing that shit being hand drawn and then being scanned in there with the different layers and stuff was just uh, super impressive to me because it's a skill that, not saying I can do the other skill, it's a skill that I could never do at all, and so it's it's always going to be impressive. But well, uh, and how like I really really loved how faithful Cuphead was to the 1930s style cartoons. Yeah, like the the exaggerations. The, the facial expressions, the way it was animated, like the way the eyes like would bug out and stuff like that. It's just, it's so Steamboat Willy. It's fucking, it was just, it blew me away. I wanted, I've wanted a playable cartoon since Beautiful Joe back in the day. It was like, yeah. that was sort of like a playable comic book and they did a fucking great job, yep. but it wasn't exactly right. This seems exactly right for that, for a playable cartoon. I agree, I agree. Uh, Zeke, what was your... Your best graphics I'm very in Shark Direction. Because if this was um, two and this, four, I wonder what your number one was. Like, I didn't go like, like, I loved Cuphead, Horizon. I loved Persona. I think their art styles are different and fun and innovative and all that stuff. But this one kind of surprised me that I thought it, it's because immediately it was one of those games that I just stopped everything I was doing. I stopped the game to look. I didn't, I put down my keyboard mouse or my controller and I look my huh. game, my best art, gra- uh, bar- best graphics art design is Hellblade. No question. Yeah. Hellblade Center of Sacrifice was fucking phenomenal. Makes phenomenal. Sense. Um, I stopped when she was, when, uh, uh, Senua was looking at like the stones, those little monolithic stones and I turned the camera around and I looked at her face. It struck an emotional chord with me. Like that rare, like the rarely happens with game. Not only that, but I actually stopped. And if you know, like if you've seen people or you associate with people with dread, dreadlocks, yeah. you know that unless they like tighten that shit and keep that shit camped every single day. There's little hairs like all over. It's like a, like you see the dreadlocks, but if you look really close, you can see like a layer of like random hairs that are kind of popping up out of the dreads. They fucking captured that. I zoomed in on the dreadlocks just to see like <laughs> the little random hairs that were like popping out of the top of the dreadlock. I remember you talking about that. And it was just fucking amazing. It was gorgeously put together. Uh, the the fucking mocap is the best I've ever seen. I can just say that the main character's mocap best i've ever seen and i mean props go to and i had her name i've lost it uh i can look it up for you real quick god damn it isn't it like Mar- martina but, or something like that i don't i don't remember hold on but uh she yeah, like by far had the best performance like if she didn't win performance of the year at the game of uh, game of the Mal- year or melina jugan J- thank you melina jurgens uh, yeah. or jurgens however you want to say it um yeah. Jurgens, something like that. She gave a, a fucking phenomenal, haunting, just impactful performance. And a lot of that had to do with how well they captured her facial expression and how. 
Well, I was going to say, not only that, she didn't even have training for that role. She actually started as one of the people that was just working on the system. And then they used her as a test subject. And she was so innately good at the role that they ended up using her. But they didn't hire her for that. In fact, she was doing something completely different. And, yep. uh, and she just fell into the role. And whoever, whoever pulled the trigger on deciding to make her the lead character is one of the reasons that game is as good as it is. Yeah. And also, the, the, cool, the cool way they incorporated her... Um, and, like, I, I like, think I played this game without a camera on because I didn't want to take up any real estate. Yeah. yeah like, no I didn't camera. want to take up any video real estate on this. I mean, look at this. That look at the, how look it's lit. Natty. Yeah. Look at her face. It's like she's alone in the dark. Like, it, it's giving me goosebumps right now just thinking about it, just remembering it. Um, look, at the, like, see, look, at the, look at her dreadlocks. Look at the top. Yeah, you're right. See the hair? It's like, that's fucking detail. That's a fucking amazing. Also, the way they, they handled her, uh, um, her I, don't wanna, I don't know if illness, her condition, I suppose, yeah. is, is a good way to put it. With pattern notification or pa pattern um, recognition, like how that associates with her condition and how they put it graphically in the world. When she was like, "That shadow on the wall looks like this," so it ha must have meaning, which is a thing that those people, the people with that condition, do. They associate meaning to patterns, at yeah. least as far as like the documentary at the end told me. Yeah, it. Uh, this was one of those games that <laughs> had I have or. If I had the the constitution to play through, because apparently you guys said this gets pretty fucking uh, horrifying at certain parts. Uh, if I had the constitution to play through it, I'd probably be right there with you in terms of the the graphics and whatnot. But uh, yeah, it is pretty impressive. But I still think Cuphead. I think all three of these deserve uh, a nod. So I think we did a, a good job there. It also oh, yeah, none is, of these choices I, I went like. Nah, that's stupid. Yeah, it, it it's pretty telling to kind of talk about the year so far that we've only had one game uh, for the three of us that has doubled with uh, with best story. So let's jump to we've done graphics, multiplayer, story. Let's do best music because Zeke, I think I think I might get a nah out of you, uh, but we'll start with, <laughs> <laughs> we'll start with uh, we'll start with right. you here, Zeke. And I'll, I'll shrink you down. I'll shrink you down, buddy. You're going to start with me? Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, now, I don't know because I, I actually did because that this is the one thing that in I, I best music and like best sound and stuff like that. Like I got a little confused. I don't know if it's going to be a dual thing, but just, uh, just put, the, put, the, put my choices up. Okay. I'm All not right. sure if. If, if yeah. both of them are on there, uh, no, there will only be one. Both of them, I think, because I did, I did like a, a dual thing. Uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll explain myself. You put okay, Persona there we Five. Go. Okay, yeah, Persona Five, best music, best sound, no question. Um, it's not wasn't my favorite original soundtrack because I put, oh, I put OST as one, and Persona Five for everything else. Like Persona Five just fucking killed. It killed everything. Every single track in that is a fucking joy to listen to. However, my favorite OST, and I gotta give a, I gotta give a shout out to my to my boy Dose One. Uh, my favorite OST that I've listened to over and over again is High Hell. It's a little known fucking Devolver game that kind of came out under the radar, but I fucking listened to it all the time, and I fucking loved it. The OST from High Hell was probably my favorite OST. But as far as sound and music within a particular game, not even close. Persona. Yep. Fucking hands down. Um, that was my number two. I guess, I guess, like, uh, uh, I'd have to mention Nier. Like, it was in my head. But when I compared the two, I was like, Nier had some great shit. But which one did I fucking person like better? Not even close. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, again, I didn't finish Persona. I only played, I think I was looking back at my, um, my tw I think I played 18, maybe 20 hours of it. But in those 18 to 20 hours, the music is what the music and also the graphics, like the style of the thing, which I think are kind of one and one in that uh, in that sense, just st stood out so much. Uh, had I had finished that game, it might have been further up for me. It might have taken the first plot. But uh, Co, what was your uh, your best music slash sound okay. slash whatever? Kind of a weird, so weird title. Most of my community can kind of peg this. 
um, particularly because this this game is kind of a, an amalgamation of two of my favorite genres, which is uh, EDM, you know, I used to DJ and stuff, and uh, rock and metal, which I listen to today. So for me, there was one game in particular that at least three times I can remember, but probably more, I would stop playing the game and just kind of be like, oh, this music is bad. <laughs> like, this is awesome. And, and also, multiple times throughout the game, I was like, I am buying this OST. And that is the all-encompassing awesomeness of Mick Gordon in Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein. Uh, oh, my God, man. There were so many just tracks in this that I were just so heavy and were so good. And there was at one point where the music was so much better than what was going on. I was faking action in the game to keep up. I was like, oh, guys are shooting at me. Oh, no, get behind here. Quick reload. Oh, God, one bullet. And keep in mind, there's like two enemies just standing there like, you know, but the music was too good. Yeah. So, I mean, it, this, this, uh, this game runs a gambit from rashing guitars to hardcore EDM just with heavy ass bass to southern twang style country rock to like all sorts of little filler. And, and, and it's just. It's 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 just it's an incredibly awesome soundtrack, and um, I, I got nothing else to say. That yeah. was it. Like it was it was fantastic, and I and I loved I loved every track. I still haven't bought the OST. I'm going to, and uh, yeah, it's it was great. I really love the music. I feel like uh, how I mean, how about that twisted yeah, sister cover? That dude? that ending song just nailed it for me. You know? <laughs> that, yeah. Yeah, really enough that that was probably my like least favorite. But, but I'm the with rest you. Of it, I'm with you till the credits, and then the credits started. And I'm yeah, just like, I, the, what? That was weird. That, the credits were weird. I have to admit, like they tried yeah. to go a direction with it, but it just wasn't quite there. But but like the beginning track with that like country, that kind of country rock vibe, and then it kind of amps up throughout the game. And when you get towards the end, everything you're hearing is like really heavy and deep. And oh, I loved it. I loved yeah. It. I, it, uh... I didn't even hate the the last song. It's just it was just out of place and sort of jarring. Yeah, that's it was out of place. I think is the best way to say it. It wasn't it wasn't terrible. It was just it was it's one of those songs that you hear it and you're like, I kinda like the original better. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for me, Wolfenstein yeah. was it, it had the music was fine, but I always because it was such a Bethesda game and because it there's so many parallels, I think, in that game that kind of draw me to Doom. I just thought of like, man, that Doom OST was pretty good though the entire time I was playing well, Wolfenstein. You know it's the same guy. I know it's the same exact guy, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That, that's why like that's why i'm saying the parallels were there uh but it just kept thinking i just kept thinking like i'd really like to be playing doom because that action was much better than this action but hey we got some story let's let's sit back and watch some story <laughs> like that was my old play playthrough i also played through it in a single sitting uh which i think probably hurt my uh my experience with the game a little bit but anyways uh that was not on my list uh persona 5 was uh, number two for me uh oddly enough Maybe oddly enough, I don't know if Cody will have Come to on. see where you go with this. Per, uh, Xenoblade Chronicles Two was my third. Uh, no, it's not Cuphead. This is. Oh a, no! I, I thought you were gonna. I thought you were gonna shock the world by saying Cuphead. No, this Cuphead was definitely number two so, on my list because I love. So wait a second. It. Was Xenoblade Chronicles X Two this year or last year? Or Xenoblade Chronicles Two was this year? What, what, I don't understand the X Two. Oh X Two. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's not talk about that. So uh, my pick for best music, uh, when I first heard the theme song to this game, I was like, what are you fucking doing? Like, th no, this doesn't, that's not a stop. Just stop. It's just so stupid and it doesn't match the game at all. And I hate this song. And then the game came out and I've, it's one of the few songs that I've actually listened to while not playing the game and sat there and like, you know, snapped along with it or fucking done done the the leg mounts etc uh for best music super mario odyssey mario odyssey yeah it uh there's a point in that game where the theme song of the game becomes one of my favorite moments of 2017 uh if you've played the game you know exactly the moment that i'm talking about with uh with mario it almost every single place that i visited in that game just had phenomenal music i was either like bobbing my uh my leg up and down or if it was the the theme song i was trying not to sing along because no one wants to hear me sing etc but yeah i uh i absolutely love that game uh and the music in it i think is probably one of the best parts of it so i mentioned that when when we had triax on the show i said 
the fucking music is fantastic. Yeah. And it's not something that I usually say about like a, a Nintendo game or a Mario game. Um, but it's really good. Yeah. It, uh, did you beat it? See? It's good. No, I played it. I, I, I played a little of it, but enough. So where it's gotta be saying something that with the like 10 hours that I've played of it, that the music like jumped out at me. Like yep. it really is noticeable. Yep. Um, I, I think a lot of people too uh, might be upset that Nier's not on here. Keep in mind, I didn't touch Nier at all. I think the only person that did, well, no, Zeke played like the first playthrough of it. Ko was the one that finished it, but. I kind of feel the that. same way. Like here, here's the thing about Nier. Here's the thing about Nier. Nier does a lot of things really, 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 really well, but it doesn't really do any one thing the best. Like Nier is a fantastic game. And again, like it, it's an incredible experience. Like, don't get me wrong, but there are other games that have more specialized parts that are better in our opinion. Um, but of course, like Nier is an amazing, absolutely amazing game. Um, yeah. At least in my opinion, uh, especially for those that have finished the multiple endings. But yeah, yeah. Like, don't think we're pooping on Nier. It's incredible. Right. The, the <laughs> way that you guys talk about Nier, the way that I think the community talks about Nier I've said this multiple times, but I truly think over the, the next two weeks before our next show, I'm going to go and watch the YouTube uh, like cutscenes of that just so I can understand why everyone's freaking out over the uh, the entire multiple ending of, the, of that game. So uh, yeah. that's kind of a big that's again. Uh, well, and, and the reason why Nier didn't crack, like didn't get didn't get number one for me or, or number two is because Nier has a lot of really, really great music. But. Only, I would say only like two songs that I know in the near soundtrack that really like popped and pounded, like, like really jab, like jacked me up and made me really excited. Yeah. Uh, whereas Persona, like almost all the songs yeah. that I've heard so far. Uh, Cuphead, same thing. Like I love almost every single song that Cuphead put out. Near, like we are become as, uh, we are become as gods. And the this cannot continue. Those are the two like that really like had this had the uh, impact for me. They're I'm so sorry, I'm they, stuttering, guys. I'm trying to come up with adjectives, and they're just not fucking. They're not there. You know, showing up. That's fine. That's fine. You should play a game that helps with your vocabulary. You like with words or something. <laughs> no, I have that. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. You big dummy. Got, Dad, it's what. Well, I got D's in English because I have lots of words. I have the best words. Got I have the best huge vocabulary. <laughs> Huge. Huge. I have the best Thank words. You. I was waiting for someone to go there. Jesus. Thank you. Jesus Christ. Oh, ah, um, all right. So we've got one more before we start uh, in our top 10. And that is, I think, one of my favorite categories because it's always fun to just shit on stuff. It's the disappointment of the year. Uh, oh, man. Can I go last so I can leave? Uh, oh, really? Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Uh, that well, bad, huh? Oh, I can't wait for this. Well, Ko's going first uh, by how we've okay. with this. So. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. So, um, as you guys know, I don't dislike any game. So I actually did not put a game for this category. This is this is a <laughs> blank category for me um, because I wouldn't be able to sell out if I were to like stake a claim on something being bad. So this is actually an empty one. Okay. Um, okay that being said, there there. Okay, now let me let me say this. <laughs> I need to preface this a little bit. Uh oh. Uh, uh -oh. Gotta be gotta be slightly political. Okay. Um, the 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 people that that push this game really did their best but the problem and see this is this is we see this problem in the gaming industry every so often where one hand will say yeah all this stuff is going to happen and then the, the people that actually make the things are like we don't know what we're doing so that creates this issue where a bunch of expectations are set and then are not met so what happened was there was this fun game that uh that we played and it came out and it actually was really big at the time like people really enjoyed it and 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 here's you know what's funny guys you know what's funny i'm reading chat i haven't seen a single yeah i don't know where you're going thing. with this i'm trying to think i, I hope we have three different big there was this, and when i say it you guys are going to be like oh okay here we go right. there was this one game that came out and it was huge on twitch and everyone was playing it for like a weekend and it was so popular that when it shut down like people were like oh man bring it back bring it back and i was one of them and in fact i was super hyped for the release i was like this is going to be great like 
They had all these problems in beta. They said they were going to fix them all. And then and then it came out. So I was super jazzed for it. I actually timed a whole weekend for it. I think I know so where you're going. So the game comes out and I play it and I play it for, for like two hours and I realize not only have the changes not made it in, it is actually a little worse than when I played it in beta and I'm having less fun now than I did in beta. I closed the game and I never opened it again. Now, I don't know what this is. What's the game, Co? Can I press and the that button? That game was Friday, okay. the Friday the 13th. All right. Okay. That I have to sense. say that um, I have to say that that I was uh, I really wanted this game to be awesome. I, I when 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 we when we did the beta, we had some devs that were in us. The devs that played with us were super cool. They would jump in our games. They would tell us all the problems and how to get around them. They would tell us what was coming down the pipeline, and and they 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 would like they were super cool. They were really cool, and that's why coming out of beta, we were so hyped for this game. And then it came out. And it was mired with technical issues. In some cases, people and consoles couldn't even play their game. It would erase their progress every time they opened it. Like, there were tons of bugs. There were huge exploits that if people took advantage of them would just end rounds. And these bugs didn't get fixed for weeks. And, and here's the deal. I don't even know the state of the game now, but I have not heard anything positive about this game since it was released. Um, and, it, and it's just unfortunate because it started as a decent game with dev outreach. And those two yeah, things together yeah, yeah. usually are great. So we, like me, I speak for a lot of people when I say, like, there was an army of people that were super hyped for this game. We thought it was going to be the next Dead by Daylight, which, by the way, to this day, Dead by Daylight gets significantly more viewers in this game now. Yep. And it came out well before it. And when Final Fantasy XIII went into beta, it, it destroyed the Dead by Daylight community. Everyone thought they were going to move to Friday the 13th. And then the release was so bad that everyone went back to Dead by Daylight. Yeah. So that was that was honestly my most disappointing game of the year, just because of the level of hype that I had, and then on release I just got, like I I haven't been that let down in a long time, in terms of of what I was told was coming and what I actually got. Yeah, my yeah. my experience with Friday Thirteenth was the two of you plus Bike Men like hyping it up to me on the show. And then, Thirteen, yeah. All right, yeah, and then and then playing it, and I was just kind of like, what the. F were we playing the same fucking game? Like, <laughs> I did not. I did not enjoy my time with it uh, whatsoever. So, it wasn't as much of a disappointment for me because I wasn't. I don't think I. I didn't play it uh, the first time like you guys did and had so much fun with it. Um, and so it, it that was not on my 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 blip for most uh, disappointing game of the year at all. By the way, chat. Little known fact: Final Fantasy thirteen actually is the game that killed Dead by Daylight. Wait, I know. Did not I say even Final Fantasy? Not even the same year. <laughs> But uh, I mean, these these are these are why you watch the show, guys. Is for those kind of facts. Yeah. And now you know, and now you can. Is that what I said? World. Did I say Final Fantasy uh, I, Thirteen? I, I, I don't know who said it. To be okay. Honest. No, you said FF Thirteen. Oh. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, part. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I don't know, Zeke. Any any comments on Friday the Thirteenth? No, I pull in the game. I wanted to love it too. No, that's a, actually a great choice because I wanted to love this game. I love horror. Um. I wouldn't say I'm a, I'm the biggest you know Jason Voorhees fan like the that series of movies, but I like them. And I was really excited for this to be something super great. And it just ended up being kind of a janky mess when I played it. Yeah. The best part about, for me, Friday the 13th was hearing bike men just say Tommy Jarvis over and over. <laughs> Dude, Tommy Jarvis is the best thing that came out of Final Fantasy 13. Yeah, exactly. Yes. 100%. Tommy Jarvis is here. <laughs> Nice go. Uh, all right, I'll go next, and then uh, Zeke. Zeke, you're nervous about this one for some reason. I, I'm not. I'm not. I'll get. I'll get hate. Whatever. They. All, they all know what it is, anyways. Okay. We'll see. Uh, for me, maybe. I'll go. To, I'll go. I'll start from my my uh, third biggest disappointment of the year, and just kind of work my way up uh, without very much explanation. For me, number three was uh, Shadow of War: Middle Earth. I just was expected to jump into that game fully and. I jumped in that game and was got out as fast as possible after a stream. <laughs> I, was not, <laughs> I was not too interested in it after that. Uh, Never picked it up. The second game is not so much about the game. It's about more about how the company handled it. Obviously, I'm talking about Star Wars Battlefront 2. I, I feel like that was just a fucking... It was just a weird thing, man. That, it was ugly, man. It was yeah, ugly. It was such a weird thing. It was such a fucking weird thing with that. Um 
yeah, I, I don't, I don't have to say much about Star Wars. Uh, it, it is what it is. For me, uh, I think the next game I expected it to be what Path of Exile is for me right now, where it's a game where I log in every single fucking day. I'm excited to play it. I'm excited to go and you know get items and hang out with friends and go raiding and do different missions and stuff like that. And after I played it on PC or after I played it on console. I was waiting for that Holy Grail PC moment. It came out on PC. I played it for a week and I dropped it. Uh, it's, it's Destiny 2. Yes. It's the most disappointing yep. game of the year yep. for me. It, <clears throat> I, I wish I enjoyed that game as much as I thought I was going to enjoy it. But it just completely missed the mark. And after I played it for a week, I, I will probably never touch Destiny 2 again. Unless they do like some crazy fucking expansion that fixes everything. Um <sighs> But I just don't think that's going to happen. It uh, it's just a and, and watching kind of the community react to that game is uh, is weird too because a lot of them I think have more hate for that game than I do. But for me, I'm just like eh, just kind of like meh. I just I don't doesn't do meh, anything meh, meh. for me. do anything. No, that for me. your your reasoning for that is a lot of my reasoning for mine as well. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I don't think I need to say anything else. It was just like I'm almost it's almost depressing for me to talk about it because I wanted it to be like, I, I think I just made that game uh, so much better in my mind uh, with it coming to PC. And I think not only did the um, game kind of fail uh, to keep me interested, but that lag time between console to PC coming out really fucking, I think kind of was the nail in the coffin for that. And I didn't I know that until I played it. it. Nail yeah. in the coffin. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know that that was going to happen the second I booted up the PC version. Um, I had fun with it for the day that I played it, and then I just, I'm just done. So that's my. Yeah, I think I, I don't know. This might might have been a meme, a long time meme, but I think I think Mastiny is like the best way to put that. No, I was going to say that, and I was like, I think that's a meme, so I didn't say it. But yeah, I'm right might there with be, you. But yeah, I this is the first time I've saw it, and I, and I can't believe I hadn't like made that connection myself yeah. or seen it already. But yeah, it's Destiny. Yeah. Dude, there's a reason that, you know, streamers that played Destiny 1 for two or three years straight are now, with Destiny 2 being out less than a year, publicly posting on their Twitter, yo, don't expect to see Destiny 2 on my channel this entire time. Like, there's not enough for me to play this game the entire time. And these are people that played Destiny 1 nonstop for years. And now the second one comes out, and we're like, what, six months? From the con like, we're not even six months. God, when the game come out four months ago, and they're yeah. already saying like, I can't stream this full time. I'm sorry. Yep. Um, I mean, that's all. That's all you got to see at that point. Yeah. All right, Zeke. I'm excited to see. I maybe I know what this is, but I don't know. I don't know what this is. So what? What was your uh, most disappointing game of the year? Uh, for the for the same reason that you did that you were disappointed with Destiny. Well, one of the reasons. Uh, same reason I was disappointed with this. It was one of those games that I was like. Man, this is gonna be great. Yeah. I'm gonna love it. It's gonna be fan fucking tastic. And you can go ahead and throw it on the screen because I just want to get the hate over with. My most disappointing wow. game, Zelda Breath of the Wild. Okay. And the reason and hate, hate me if you want. Biggest disappointment. And not because it's a bad game. I'm not gonna shit on it because it's a bad game. I was so excited. I bought a fucking system because of this game. That's true. I guess and I grabbed it. A lot of people did. And I tried to play it. And I will tell you, every single game on my top 10 list, every single one, immediately pulled me in. Immediately grabbed me and pulled me in. And made me want to keep playing. It seemed like Zelda was actively trying to weed out players that didn't want to put in the fucking time at the beginning <laughs> okay. because of the fucking... The, the the item degradation, the fucking the weapon terrible weapon system. Yeah, it was fucking <laughs> stupid. And, and the dumbest choice because it immediately I was like, yeah 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 broken. I just found this is a fucking this was a powerful weapon. Yeah, find another one. Pam pam broken. See, I Great. that didn't bother me. I it seems like you're actively trying to make me not want to play this game. Yeah, I, that didn't bother me at all. I'm, 
I'm a thousand percent with Zeke. That drove me absolutely crazy. I thought it's one of the worst game design decisions I've ever. Liked. Was it because you guys wanted like a connection to your weapons, or just because the idea that you would well, find? It's because one no actual weapon works like that. The idea of you of anyone hauling around like ten plus weapons on their belt and they use it a few times and it breaks, like that's just dumb. It's such a contrived mechanic. Like all they want you to do is is hoard weapons and use different weapons, but it's like. It, it's just it's it's a it's a in my opinion a terrible example of game design. And and by the way, I just want to add into here, Zeke. I absolutely love your decision on this. If I didn't already have such low expectations for the game, it would have been mine too. Um, I I went in not expecting much, and guess what? I didn't get much. So for me, it was just kind of like, eh. but like I completely see where you're coming from. It's a great. That's choice. the other thing. That's what I mean. Most disappointing game. This is not worst game. <laughs> right. Right. This right. Is most disappointing. There's a difference between bad and disappointing. Disappointment means that you expected something and you didn't get it, so you were disappointed. I was disappointed because this game was made out to be like this awesome, wonderful, like everybody was hyping it up to me. Everybody that played it was in my ear saying how great it was. Right. I picked it up and went, I don't get why people think this is so great. I am disappointed by this. <laughs> I get it. Well, I, I, have, like, it like the story. It, man. The, I the, mean, the weapon stuff was, I think, the dividing line for that game. You either liked it. You either. And you can take it off emote only, guys. I don't care. I mean, I mean, I think my mods are just like, having I can fun. Handle, oh, are they just having fun? Okay, yeah, that's they're fine. just having fun. They didn't do it for criticism. Uh, but I, I do well, feel like okay. that was like the dividing line of that game. You either fucking absolutely loved it or you absolutely hated it because of. Uh, the system of weapon degradation like that was I, I, well to, to be clear jp there's a lot of other reasons not to like it like that's that's but one it, of it's the main point reasons I, yeah yeah See, <laughs> i mean this. my biggest thing is and correct me if i'm wrong but i've whenever i hear you talk about zelda and when this will come up because it's in my top 10 list i won't i'm not gonna hide that but whenever i hear this came come up uh i always hear you say that like they didn't innovate on any systems is that a, a thing that you would agree with co is that am i putting words in your mouth there they not only didn't innovate on systems they introduced bad ones and they took away a lot of what makes zelda special to put in the new systems so it's 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 like the worst of both worlds okay i think we'll just have to disagree or no agree and that's, to disagree. that's, like, that's yeah. fine that's yeah. totally cool when yeah, I saw, yeah. dude i but seriously i felt like i just felt like it was a bland open world adventure game the only reason it's even considered decent is because it's a Zelda game. I think that if it didn't have Zelda attached to it, that it would have been so under the radar that we wouldn't even been talking about it. And it's the kind of thing where, you know, like that's just, but here's the thing, here's the thing. And this is important to mention. When you take an iconic franchise like Zelda and put it in a game that is instantly going to make a lot of people like it. And I'm totally respectful of that. I have franchises like that too. So, you know, right, it's, it's okay right. to disagree on this stuff as a non Zelda I wouldn't even say fan. I was going to say super fan, but is it not like I'm not really a Zelda fan. I like Zelda, but I'm not really a Zelda fan. And to me, it was. Eh. But, you know, if, if it's the kind of thing where I loved Fallout 4 and a lot of people who sort of like Fallout 4 look at Fallout 4 and go, that game's trash. How could you like that? That's a great and I example, say yeah. I'm a Fallout fan. Right. Yeah. I loved it. So, you know, it's it's the same premise. It, it's that's how it works. So it's, you know, yeah, fine to disagree. On. I think that's a, a perfect way to, to kind of capsize that or put a cap on that conversation is is falling to capsize the conversation yeah, capsize the whole conversation yeah um but yeah that'll <laughs> that'll show up on yeah, my that's, my that's the thing like it's that's one once again biggest disappointment is not worst game biggest disappointment is high hopes i was yes it's gonna be oh yeah yeah i'm trying to think i I want to like bring in someone to talk about that, but I feel like we've had that conversation before. It's also why I did a fandom for this because the two of you would have not <laughs> talked about, even when we talked about it on the show, uh, I was like shocked, shocked and appalled that you guys hated that game <laughs> as much as both of you did. Cause for me, it was just like, uh, uh clo as close to a masterpiece as any game got this year, but we'll get to that. When we'll get to top 10. Uh, which I think is now. Uh, we did our our categories. Uh, that was fun, by the way. Let's definitely do that next year. Like that was yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. I want to. Uh, I think next year we'll probably. I think categories are great. Um, but I think we should do like some more like unique categories, like more categories and more refined categories, like exact. Like yeah. that art category could have been three different categories. Yeah, we could have done like art direction, uh, best graphics, and best environment. Yeah, 
Well, we're, I mean, we're already at two hours, and we haven't even got to the top ten yet. And that's that's true. Right? Yeah. I think <laughs> I think our point. I think having five extra categories is fine, but um, I don't five know extra if... categories. Next year's show is six hours. <laughs> <laughs> I think we we should uh, stick to or go outside of kind of the normal like best story, best multiplayer. Do like kind of like uh, how TB does like uh, best loot box or something like that. Something yeah. a little bit more best fun. series reboot, yeah. best loot box. Yeah, like stuff like that. Absolutely, yeah. that'd be cool. That type of stuff is favorite fun. protagonist. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's a great one. Um, There's a lot of things. So um, now, right. can we take a potty break? Yeah, I think let's. I was about to say we're about 15 minutes, but let's take a break and we'll jump into our top 10. Uh, and then we have our community top 10, which we'll probably run through pretty quick after that as well. Or actually, hold on. We've got these real quick because these are the community categories. Oh, yeah, let's threes. do these. Uh, now, the button presses on these are a little wonky, so I guess we'll see what happens here. Uh, so these are the community uh, categories that was voted on. I don't know the actual number of votes for each of these. I think it was probably in the four to 5,000. Uh, but I'm gonna press. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on, JP, JP, hold on. What? I'm huge. Oh, no, you're fine. You're Whoa! only fine because you're doing that. If you stop doing that, you won't be fucking huge. <laughs> there. All right. Uh, no, I gotta go back over here. All right. So for best story, sorry, the text is a little bit tiny because there's a lot of information here. Number three. Any original sin? Oh, wait. Now this. Hold on. This is um... best story. No, no, this is the categories, and they have a like a top three. Oh, and they have a top three just games of the year. No, I knew I could count top, on you, chat. They have a top say. ten games of the year, but for each of the categories, they have three games. Oh, okay, so we're gonna do audience categories now, yes. and then do our top ten, and then audience top ten. Yep. Yeah, okay, got it. Okay. I figured we'll do this before we take a break, so it just makes sense. Cool. Uh, number two, I don't know what these are. Uh, number two, and I also have to like move over to my monitor to see. Number That's two, story, okay. Near. Okay. Near Automata. Near. Um, what do you guys think is number one? You think it's Horizon? Um. Yeah. If it's not near, it's oh wait a minute. No, I don't think it would be Persona. They might have gone. They might have gone the game of the year route because it's not on there. Like they, they might have gone Ian Fitch. Okay. Uh. Oh, I just had it spoiled. Uh, Divinity Original Sin was thirteen percent of the vote. Near is eighteen percent of the vote, and the number one community voted game for best story of twenty seventeen. It's not on the right monitor. Is Horizon Zero Dawn. Horizon Zero Dawn. Nice. Had 24% okay. right. of the vote. 24% of nice. the vote. Nice. Okay. Uh, best graphics slash art direction. Number three. Persona. Okay. Yep. Makes okay. sense. Makes sense. Number two. Who's going to be Cuphead? Horizon. Oh. Number two. Horizon. Maybe Cuphead? It might be Cuphead. Uh, Hellblade. Cuphead. Oh, oh, it is Cuphead. Okay. Nice. All right. All right. It's Cuphead. Uh, yeah, nice. Do I do I have the? I want to know the percentages for that. Shoutouts to my mods because they made like pie charts and everything for this shit. Twelve uh, percent for Persona Five. Eighteen. Wow. Eighteen percent for Horizon Zero Dawn. Thirty-four percent of the vote for Cuphead. Overwhelming. Yeah. This one's gonna be interesting. Yeah. Best multiplayer. I am. I am interested to uh, to hear this and also see if I get the button press right. All right. Call of Duty War War. Okay. All right. You know, Call of Duty was good this that, year. So that's okay. We don't, none of us play that game. So yeah. maybe it's great. And everyone that, that does play it, uh, they said that they kind of did a good job this year. So uh, number yeah, two. He said everybody liked it. Yeah. Yeah. Divinity. Oh, I guess that Divinity is. Divinity got number two? That is kind of interesting. Wow. It's a great game oh. and it's multiplayer. I, I, I mean, honestly, if I had played it multiplayer, it probably would have been up my list too. But I just never played it multiplayer, so I couldn't judge it as that. No, it's a great, that's quick, a great selection. Quick question: Did they were they allowed to pick <laughs> games that were early access or not? Did they have the same rules as we did? Now I don't. I think that was a topic uh, of controversy, and we'll reveal it here. I don't know if PUBG is going to be number one here, but it might. I would say Fortnite. But we'll see. I don't know. I'm going to hit the button okay. and see what happens. Fortnite, interesting selection. Destiny. Oh, 2. look at oh, that! Yeah. What? Oh, wow. Gosh. Wow. Wow. Oh, Hold on. The percentages man. were incredibly close here. Didn't even see that coming. Holy fuck. The wow. percentages were super close. Call of Duty had 11%. Mean, PUBG wasn't in the top three multiplayer. Um, I think PUBG was not allowed because it's not in the top 10. Oh, okay. 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 So do, I don't do, think do the mod's have, allowed. Is that a curiosity? Do you have the percentage PUBG had? Uh, no, because it, it, it wasn't allowed to be voted on. Oh. So I think that's why it's not there. Okay, so Fortnite nor PUBG were allowed to be voted on because they were yeah. fourth early. Fortnite should have been able to. Uh, nope. Fortnite's released. Nope. Or is early access? I think it's still in. Maybe beta. no one liked it enough. 
I think people do like it, but uh, the percentages were super close. Divinity at 16.6% uh, percent, and Destiny at 17.1%. Oh, so wow. 0.5% uh, split that up. Um, wow. I'm looking at some of the other games. Uh, I'll just kind of go down the list. Absolver, StarCraft Remastered, Friday the 13th, uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands, Ark, Guild Wars 2, Injustice 2, For Honor, Battle Right, Total War, Warhammer 2, Tekken 7, Star Trek Bridge Crew, Star Wars Battlefront, uh, Cuphead. I guess that, yeah, I guess that's multiplayer. Head multiplayer, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Mario Kart 8, Final mm. Fantasy, Final Fantasy 14, uh, and then Splatoon 2 was number four. Huh. Okay. Mm. So gotcha. none, none of the, none of the, um, arena games, arena shooter games. Yeah. No, that wasn't there. Uh, no Overwatch. Well, that didn't come out. It didn't come out this year. Yeah. 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 Oh, right, 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 right. Uh, now this, I, I don't know which one I'm going to reveal here, so I'm just going to push this button and we'll see what we go with. Nothing. All right. I'm going to push this button and see what we go with. Nothing. Is it messed up? <laughs> you have to click there it. it is. There it is. There it is. Uh, best music. Number three was Cuphead. Cuphead. Good cool. choice. Number, good choice. Number two, Persona. Okay. Good call. Number one. Near. It's going to be near. You think it's near? Near. If it's yeah. not near, I'll be surprised. Yeah, yeah okay. It's near. It's, <laughs> yeah. Near. Yeah. it's near. It's near. It's near. There we go. Uh, now, most disappointing. I wonder where this, how this is going to go. Uh, number three, voted by the community, Mass Effect Andromeda. Okay. okay. Understand. I'm, completely understandable. I'm not, I'm not one. Yeah. I, I agree. I understand that. Number two. Completely understandable. Destiny. Okay. Destiny 2. Wow. See, I thought Destiny 2 was going to be one. I don't know what number one is. Let's see. Battlefront. Okay. Yeah. Of yeah. Course. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Makes, uh, of course. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. Okay. I want to yeah. see the percentages on Battlefront. I wonder if that was just like through the roof. Uh, oh my God. Well, no, not really. 26.6% for Battlefront. 22.3% for Destiny and 21% for Andromeda. Jesus, those things controlled almost three fourths of the entire votes. Yeah. <laughs> Most disappointing. Holy shit. That's crazy. Is it weird that we live in a day and age where a Star Wars game is like one of the most shitted on games in existence at this point? It's kind of weird. Yeah. It's kind of weird. It's yeah. kind of weird. Uh, awesome, though. I don't, I I don't know it. if I like this. For Honor was number <laughs> four with 5.9, and then. Uh, Understandable. Hey, actually, uh, Legend of Zelda's on here uh, with 1.9% of the vote. So, Zeke, you're not yeah! alone. You're not alone. Point... Zeke repping that 1.9%. Yeah. We are the 1.9%. <laughs> <laughs> you're not alone. You're not alone. No, uh, d isn't it awesome that Destiny 2, best multiplayer, but also most disappointing? Yep. Yep. Second. For most is funny. I thought that was interesting. Apparently this year needed a lot more multiplayer games. <laughs> it really was like a multi. Yeah, it was it, for me. Like I didn't even have a third best. I was talking to Zeke about this last week. I didn't even have a third best multiplayer game. Like the only games that I came up that. was Mario Kart and then Star, Kart, Star Trek Bridge Crew. There was nothing else that I played that was like stand out this year for that. So. Oh, and as Chad is pointing out, I should have said that differently. It's not weird that we have a Star Wars game. It's it. Oh God! Jesus! Get that arm away from me! <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not so weird that an EA game takes the most hated game spot. So that's you know maybe that's understandable. Yeah, maybe yeah. that's understandable. All right. Well, we're halfway done. We still got to get to our top ten list, uh, which we'll be spending. I'm I'm excited for top ten. I think that one's. I can't wait to reveal my number one game because <laughs> I think it's going to be uh, controversial to say the least. Uh, but we'll do all that and more. After this quick break, don't go nowhere. Still got about two hours left to go on Drop Frames Games of the Year 2017 show. We'll be right back. We'll see you then.